broadcasting on Inter Radio Facebook page and on the Conclusion Channel YouTube page. Before we start our show, let us start with the recitation of the Horatio Imperata and the prayer for the protection of hands in Christian Philippines. We remember that we are in God's presence. To our fellow H&I members and everyone, here now is the Horatio Imperata against COVID-19. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have them. And give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We plight their protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Caluso. Pray for us. So our fellow H&I members and everyone, here now is the prayer for the protection for Hans Inclusion PH. God our Father, we implore you to ask for the enlightenment and rescue, the repentant success of the organization Hands in Inclusion Filipinas. We ask for the repentance of the group from the false judgments of other people, including its former members. Rescue us from false sense of power and deliver us from the lesson of revenge that comes from the devil. Keep us in putting God first whatever is the religion of their core team, including the founder, while being inclusive to all those who are in need of inclusion especially persons with disabilities, LGBTQI+, people confused with their gender, ethnic groups, and poorest of the poor whom you also love. Help us to stop ourselves from manipulation of other people and resorting to unjust grudge, conspiracy, and violence, which might affect the people we are trying to serve. We beg for its founder and his core team to be enlightened to see the lies behind the false doctrines and impure and violent motives of the false accusations we make and believe and open the eyes to the truth of the pride that he holds. Help us humble ourselves, O Lord. Help us to realize that fear, envy, anger, and unforgiveness comes from Satan and he may he stop whatever pride that he is holding. Please allow us to know ourselves a child of God. We also pray for those people who are blamed 
by hands intuition Filipinas. To repent from the sins, we are guilty of without resorting or believing in any false with accusations made by either them or any enemy they encounter. Forgive us from our accusations in any form and from all the wrong timings. In your eyes, the organization will. This we ask in your name. Amen. Our Lady, help of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Alonso, pray for us. Saint Claire of Montefalco, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Our Lady, help of all Christians, intercede for us. Saint Monica. Pray for us and our family and friends. Saint Augustine, pray for us and our family and our friends. Saint Michael the Archangel, Saint Benedict, Pope Saint Pius X, and Pope Saint John Paul II, rescue us from our unintended wrongdoings. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy and change the heart of everyone. All organizations and all the people who finally work with the organization who made terrible mistakes and those the people who took part in a conspiracy to falsely accuse anyone and hands in the inclusion. Amen. Amen. Okay. This, uh, this evening, our show for and our topic for today is Coping with Stress During the Pandemic This year, we are on a trying time. The COVID-19 pandemic brought everyday lives in the world to a halt. Why? Because of the increased transmission of COVID-19 not only outside Wuhan, China, but also throughout the world. Because first, the COVID-19 was declared as public health emergency for international concern last January 30, 2020, and was later declared as a pandemic by the World Health Organization last March 11, 2020. So, without further ado, here now is our topic for tonight. We're living in unprecedented times. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought a variety of health-related financial and emotional hardships to individuals across the country and the world. For many people, this has resulted to a significant increase in stress and anxiety. When not managed properly, this stress can prove to be crippling in a time when life is already very challenging. Based on a recent study indicating that more than 45% Excuse me. That 25 percent of people have experienced negative impacts resulting from stress related to the shelter-in-place order, or required us to stay at home. 21 percent of people are experiencing a major negative impact. 27 percent of people are experiencing a minor negative impact. According to Martha Hawkinson, she said, "Because stakes are high in terms of the way COVID-19 is impacting the mental health." of individuals in the United States and throughout the world, we need proactive, impactful, and implementable ways to combat these statistics. Living through the pandemic, a traumatic event, we all experience varying levels and types of stress in our daily lives. This was true even before the pandemic. Hawkinson explained that because of this pandemic, our stress can feel quite cumulative and very much very much adding and stacking on top of each other. According to her, the layered stress associated with the health pandemic contains the following elements. When we say personal stress, ladies and gentlemen, this means that you're feeling disconnected and isolated, as well as we have fear of getting sick during the pandemic. When we say financial stress, ladies and gentlemen, instead from our loss of income, due to reduced hours are being laid off from your job or work. When we say familiar stress, ladies and gentlemen, is to have a balance learning how to work at home with caring for your children 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, assisting with their education needs and household responsibilities. 
When we say cultural stress, ladies and gentlemen, this is fueled by concern over the changes occurring in your local community. Will my favorite restaurant survive the pandemic? Will I be able to return to my gym? Will my community bounce back from all of the financial hardships created by the pandemic? When we say cumulative stress, this encompasses all of the above as well as our media consumption experiences which can greatly add to our levels of stress and anxiety. Hawkinson stated that when combined, these stressors can make living through the time of a pandemic a traumatic event. If you carry a perceived or real threat that this pandemic has over our personal safety, health, and lives, it very much can be considered a traumatic event. What are the common responses to a traumatic event, ladies and gentlemen? There are several common responses that people exhibit both during and after experiencing a traumatic event. Anxiety, hypervigilance, or a state of increased alertness accompanied by behavior that aims to prevent danger. Irritability, changes in sleeping and eating patterns, forgetfulness, feeling out of sorts, sadness. According to Hawkinson, she stressed that it's important for you to recognize that they are common trauma responses. Having these responses to the pandemic does not mean that you lack coping skills or resilience. Instead, there is an opportunity to reflect on the ability to utilize your resilience and hone your coping skills. During a pandemic, perceptions of control become important. Hawkinson discusses a concept called locus of control. Your locus of control is largely based on your personality, there are essentially two different categories. When we say external locus, ladies and gentlemen, of control, it means that it feels as if things are happening to you and you don't have control of what is happening. In the case of internal locus of control, ladies and gentlemen, it is the belief that you have control over what is happening to you. Hawkinson explained that times of uncertainty, such as during a pandemic, can enhance the sense of an external locus of control. Often, this can feel disempowering. She stated that it's important to focus on what we are able to control and to hone our ability to control these factors, which includes having a positive attitude, following the health recommendations from the DOH, maintaining social and physical distancing practices in your daily life, turning off the news before it increases your level of stress and anxiety, limiting your social media consumption, essentially my streaming of YouTube and Netflix so that they have the time to use the internet for work and online classes, acting with kindness and grace. You find fun activities to do while you're at home during the quarantine and focusing your energy on these items instead of factors that are out of your control will help you regain a sense of empowerment. Hawkins has shared some coping practices that you can incorporate into your life to help regain some of the control and empowerment that you may feel has slipped away during the pandemic. These include gratitude practice. Starting out your day with a reflection of thankfulness can set a good mood and tone for the rest of your day. It can also help you stay aware of the good things that are happening in your life during the pandemic. Routine and productivity. The pandemic has disrupted most people's daily routines and it is harder to remain productive. Setting a routine is important. Stick to it as much as you can, allowing yourself flexibility to adjust as needed based on things that come up during your day. This will also help you stay productive even if your productivity level doesn't remain consistent with pre-pandemic levels. Breaks and downtime. Breaks are a way to help be more productive. Active breaks continue to stimulate your brain. Inactive breaks are important as well. And using breathing practices is a great way to make the most of these breaks. When you say movement, times of high stress and anxiety can negatively impact your motivation to be active. The physical exertion can boost energy to your brain, which can lower your emotional stress levels. And you say connection, social and physical distancing can make you feel more disconnected to the people in your lives. Look for ways to stay connected to friends and family. A good way to do this is to share the activities you're engaging in virtually with friends that can also enjoy this activity. You don't necessarily need to engage in all of these coping practices. Hawkinson encourages you 
ladies and gentlemen, to adopt the ones that resonate with you and leave the rest alone. In summary, the coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-19 pandemic may be stressful for people. Fear and anxiety about a new disease and what can happen can be overwhelming and cause strong emotions in adults and children. Public health actions such as social distancing can make people feel isolated and lonely and can increase stress and anxiety. However, these actions are necessary to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Coping with stress in a healthy way will make you, the people you care about, and your community stronger. How you respond to stress during the COVID-19 pandemic can depend on your background, your social support from family or friends, your financial situation, your health and emotional background, the community you live in, and many other factors. The changes that can happen because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the ways we try to contain the spread of the virus can affect everyone. Taking care of your friends and your family can be a stress reliever, but you should be balanced with care for yourself. Helping others cope with their stress, such as by providing social support, can also make your community stronger. During times of increased social distancing, people can still maintain social connections and care for their mental health. Phone calls or video chats can help you and your loved ones feel socially connected, less lonely or isolated. Knowing the facts about COVID-19 and stopping spread of rumors can help reduce stress and stigma. Understanding the risk to yourself and people you care about can help you connect with others and make an le outbreak less stressful. Mental health is an important part of overall health and well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act. It may also affect how we handle stress, relate to others, and make choices during an emergency. People with pre-existing mental health conditions or substance use disorders may be particularly vulnerable in an emergency. Mental health conditions such as depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia affect a person's thinking, feeling, mood, or behavior in a way that influences their ability to relate to others and function each day. These conditions may be situational, short-term, or long-lasting chronic. People with pre-existing mental health conditions should continue with their treatment and be aware of new or worsening symptoms. If you think you have new or worsening symptoms, you need to call your healthcare provider like your doctor or any PRC licensed doctors. Okay. As the COVID-19 brought everyday lives in the world to a halt and the economy is already in disruption, we have a lot of ways to, to help you be, to prevent stress. But here's a video about the six recommendations for dealing with stress during the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. So here's a video of this. So sit back, relax, and sit back in attention and enjoy. Thank you. Stress is a state of mind that many of us are experiencing as a result of the new coronavirus pandemic. At this time, it's important that we share how we're coping with the situation. Here are our tips. Some people may feel afraid of falling ill or dying, afraid of losing their livelihoods, of being separated from their loved ones, or being socially excluded. Others may feel frustrated at being unable to protect their families. Some may have lost their jobs, are experiencing economic hardships, and may even be reluctant to visit health facilities out of fear of contracting the virus. In the current situation, it's normal to feel stressed, worried, anxious, sad, confused, frustrated, or even frightened. However, you should strive to remain calm and focus on the things you can do to protect your mental health. There are things that can be done to help relieve stress, to reassure the people you know, and take practical steps to caring for yourself and your family. So what can you do? Talk. When you feel stressed or worried, talking to people that you trust can help. Contact your friends and family. Maintain a healthy lifestyle. If you're isolating or quarantining your home, try to follow a healthy diet. Engage in physical activity. Maintain regular sleeping patterns. And stay in touch with your loved ones via email, telephone, or video call. Avoid drinking alcohol, smoking tobacco, or the use of other substances. These will not help to reduce stress. If you feel overwhelmed, 
talk to a health worker or counselor. Research who you can contact for help in your community if necessary and keep this information at hand. Seek information from reliable sources. Having up-to-date information on the current situation will help you better evaluate risks and take reasonable precautions. Avoid listening to fabricated rumors and information from unverified sources. For reliable information, consult the PAHO or WHO websites or any other websites provided by health authorities in your country. Limit exposure to news coverage. To minimize your anxiety and unease, limit the time you and your family spend watching or listening to news that you find alarming. Finally, apply previously learned strategies. Try to put into practice skills that you found helpful during difficult situations in the past. For more information, please visit the Pan American Health Organization's website, www.pavo.org slash coronavirus. Okay. Okay. Guys, as we enter at this difficult time this year because of the COVID-19 pandemic, as the COVID-19 pandemic brought everyday lives in the world to a halt, we need ways on how to maintain your mental health and stress during the pandemic. It is okay, guys, to feel normal, sad, stressed, confused, and scared and angry during the pandemic or any crisis in your life. Just talk to your people you trust with and help. Just contact your friends and family. If you must stay at home, maintain a healthy lifestyle like proper diet, sleep, exercise, Social contacts with loved ones at home and email by and phone with your other family and friends. Do not smoke, alcohol, and drugs to deal with your emotions. If you feel overwhelmed, just consult with your health worker or counselor. Plan ahead where to go and how to seek help for physical and mental health needs if required. Get the facts. You should gather information that will help you accurately and determine your risk so that you can take reasonable precautions. You just find a credible source you can trust, such as the, the WHO website or the public health agency in your country. You limit worry and agitation by lessening the time you and your family spend watching or listening to media coverage that you perceive as upsetting. Draw on skills they have used in the past that help you to manage previous life's adversities and use those skills to help you. Manage your emotions during this challenging time this year due to this outbreak. That's why the COVID-19 is already um, had a severe disruption to our social and economic life. And also led to our everyday lives to a halt. That's why we have... We should always be prepared. Do not panic. Okay? Pero, guys, in order to help us to prevent COVID-19, guys, we need ways on how to stop that virus, including stress. First, you should always wash our hands. Maintain physical and social distancing. Uh, mask gatherings are still not allowed. You should take a bath and disinfection daily. Classes in, in all schools were suspended until a, a, a vaccine is discovered. Okay? So, as the new coronavirus continues to spread, stress and anxieties about the COVID-19. According to Dr. Joseph McGuire, a child psychologist from John Hopkins Medicine, he shares some tips for you and your family on how to manage coronavirus-related stress. First, prepare. Don't panic. From the news to social media, a lot of information is circulating about the new coronavirus. Some is true, but much of it may be misinformed or only partly correct, especially as information rapidly changes. McGuire recommends his incredible sources. 
such as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the World Health Organization, or the health agencies in your country to obtain up-to-date scientific information about the illness and how to prevent it. According to Dr. McGuire, he said, Knowledge in preparation can help reduce feelings of panic. Individuals can use information from us resources to develop personal plans of action. Talk to your children. Children may feel afraid or anxious about the new coronavirus. It's important to validate feelings of worry and not dismiss them outright. The following tips are, listen, makinig. After hearing their children out, parents can fill them in with the correct information to calm their worries. Provide accurate information. Determine what your children already know about the virus and give them accurate information to reduce their risk of catching it. This might include asking children about special concerns or what they know about the coronavirus. And providing practical solutions to help them minimize any risk, according to McGuire. Focus on prevention. Keep discussions focused on preventive actions like healthy hand-washing habits, regular routines at daytime meals, and other activities. If someone in your family is sick with the COVID-19 or other illness, it can be hard for children to understand. According to McGuire, he said, This is where it is important to have an established plan to minimize the worries and to focus on proactive solutions. You know your child and how they learn best. Make sure that your explanations are clear and helpful. We should always be mindful. Lastly, stress can affect the immune system, but it's uncertain whether short-term stress makes someone more likely to catch the new coronavirus. Taking steps to reduce your stress in a healthy way is important. One way to lessen worry is to ground yourself in the present moment through mindfulness. Mindfulness is a great technique that can help reduce stress during challenging times. According to Dr. McGuire, you can practice mindfulness by sitting quietly and focusing on your breathing and senses. Another way to manage stress is by limiting computer screen time and media exposure. While keeping in front of current events is important, too much attention can cause problems. Setting boundaries can prevent feeling overwhelmed by the situation. And it is important to not let fear control your life, according to Dr. Joseph McGuire. Because the COVID-19 brought lives every, in our daily routines, not only in the Philippines, throughout and throughout the world, to a halt. We need ways on how to manage our stress and anxiety, especially in our lives. Why? Because the COVID-19 is what we need to stop. How? We should make sure to maintain physical and social distancing, reduce stress, setting a healthy lifestyle, balance your balanced meal, like more fruits, more vegetables, to avoid caffeine, alcohol, or smoking with cigarettes because this will harmful your stress. And of course, Just exercise regularly. This will help you. Okay? I will be back for a few minutes. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Let us have some the announcements time. Okay. For our announcements, um, September 5, we will have the premiere of Magpayo Tayo Ka Inclusion. Uh, our host will still be Billicent Makuse and me, yours truly, Carlos Kanahashi. Our topic this Saturday is, Paano ba maging mahinahon ngayong COVID-19 pandemic? So, the Magpayo Tayo Ka Inclusion, this is inspired by the Dr. Love Radio Show and Light Moments. Okay? And uh, tomorrow, um, Benil uh, School of Management and in Information Technology will have the uh, General Assemblies for the Human Resource Management and the Real Estate Management Program tomorrow. For the Human Resource Management, the General Assembly will start at 2.30 and in the afternoon to 3.30 in the afternoon. The real estate management will be 2 p.m. Okay? And on September 5 is the ex Proj General Assembly. These are those students who will be taking the ex Proj 1 and 2 for first term 2020 to 2021. And uh, this will inform you about the requirements needed and to address your concerns with the help of Mr. Janelle Gia. These meetings will all be done via Zoom. Because Zoom is what we'll be using first while mass gatherings are still prohibited. And the Game Dev General Assembly will be on September 5 via Zoom. The online adjustment period for Benilde Manila is still ongoing until September 6. You have so much time to pay. And also, guys, on September 6, I'll be having the special edition of the One Inclusion Live Weekend Sunday edition. And there will be our 92nd day and three months of the HNI shot. Temporary shutdown. Okay. September 7 is the start of classes of Benio Manila and Antipolo. Virtual Benio, full online modality. And our new song on September 14, coinciding with the Bagani video, Tinig ng Inclusion. This will be Tinig ng Mawawalan, yung song ng ABS-CBN. Okay. This Saturday, we will reveal our logo of the Magpayo Tayo Ka Inclusion. Okay? Uh, if you want to purchase any fern, med fern uh, medicines, you can inform Ryan about that. Okay? And then, sa September 19, si Sir Martin Rivera magkakaroon ng hosting wor workshop webinar kasi this will, this will help us and this will help him. To anytime we will have his fifth child soon, the proceeds and the payments will go to him. For inquiries, you may message to your inner voice Facebook page. Tell to the owner or he or she was referred to HNI. Okay? Okay. And also, those who do not know how to use Canva, for Asher, Tara, PG, Avia, and Carla, you will guys have a workshop this Saturday at 3 p.m. Okay. And also, we continue... And for artist entry, see you. Please um, private message HNI admin about your schedule. Okay. As of August 1st first today on the on the accountability report, we have 817 pesos and 20 percent for the Binihan fundraising activity. 
I urge you guys to continue to donate to Inkunihan. So if and we like to thank everyone for your continued support. So Inkunihan is a fundraising activity and project of Hans Inclusion Philippines. This fundraising activity is for the persons with disabilities who cannot afford to find a job or work due to the COVID-19 community quarantine in the Philippines and the management didn't give any money from the social amelioration program from, given to you from the LGUs and the DSWD. This will also for allocate funds for students who cannot afford to buy gadgets to be used for online classes while face-to-face -face classes are still not allowed until a go signal is made by the Department of Health, the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, Office of the President of the Republic of the Philippines, Malacanang, Department of Education, and the Commission on Higher Education. We will also give funds for the less fortunate and for the future projects of Hans Inclusion. In order to donate, check the Inglini Hand Facebook page. For cash donations, no matter what or regardless if it's small or big, big we donate via GCash, Coins at Each, and Paymaya, and for old notes via JR Oteta. Yes, support and donations are highly appreciated. Thank you for your continuous support. Okay. And as soon as possible, we will be implement strictly implementing the rules of the H&I segments. First, prepare ahead of time. No political views in the show. Be presentable by presenting it with pride and enthusiasm. Rules in the handbook will apply during the duration of the show. Do your best. Pray before the start of the show. At the end of the show, end it with we at Hans Inclusion, include us, H&I, guide first. Wear any comfortable clothing but not sandals. Focus on the topic, not your enemies. Enjoy and no personal issues allowed during the show. And now, last um, August 20, we have already reached the 500. The 1,000 mark for our YouTube subscribers and our Facebook likes. We thank you guys for your continuous support for each night, and I urge you guys to pray for its return. Okay. And in Claudio, we had our implement our weekend schedule will start starting September 5, Saturday. Okay. For in case you miss it, for our weekend schedule, Sabado forever. 9 a.m. Winners Alive, 10.30 a.m. Consumer at Ibapa, 12 p.m. will be broadcasting the Mass live in Capo Church, 1 p.m. will broadcast the Mass from the Manila Cathedral, 2 p.m. Divine Mercy Chaplet, 2.30 p.m. Current Events, 3 and 4, 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. Double Episodes of Capo Mass, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., the One Inclusion Live Weekend, hosted by yours truly, Carlos Kanahashi. 6 p.m., TV Patrol Weekend. 7 p.m., we have the Magpayo Tayo Ka Inclusion, hosted by Billy Sen and Carlos. 8 p.m., the Umaga Diaz Reports. And we'll wrap it up with the Dr. Love Radio Show. For our lingo forever, because despite Sunday, as far as Filipinos, regardless of her faith, is a holy day of obligation. So for Sunday, 9 a.m., we have Lingkod Action. 10 a.m., we'll be broadcasting the live mass of TV Maria with a sign language interpreter and with Bishop Broderick Pabilio. 11 a.m., Tulong Mo, Pasa Mo. 12 p.m., Kiapo Mass. 1 a.m., replay of Kawal ng Inclusion with Wally Coronel. 1.30 p.m., replay of Open Arms with Billy St. Matuse. 2 p.m., the Divine Mercy Chaplet. 2.30 p.m., the Holy Rosary. 3 p.m., Capo Mass. 4 p.m., we'll have a break, 30-minute break. 4.30 p.m., One Inclusion Live Weekend. 5.30 p.m., TV Patrol Weekend. 6 p.m., the Omaga Diaz Reports. 8 p.m., it will be the Horacio Imperata or tentatively, the Itanong Mukay Andres Pajardo. 9 a.m., we will wrap it up with the Dr. Love radio show. And last September 1, we have launched 
the I1 PFC. You can access the I1 PFC worldwide because you will no longer use the I1 app and the I1 PH. Okay? Guys. Okay, nung dun, bagamat, guys, mga ka-HNA, ladies and gentlemen, kahit sarado pa rin ang Hans Inclusion since June 6, matutuloy po ang serbisyo sa pamamagitan ng Inclu Radio, Inclu Sports, HNI Online Shop, kawal ng Inclusion Facebook page, Inclinihan Facebook page, at sa Inclusion Channel YouTube page. Ang iyong suporta at iyong tulong ang kinakainatan. Mga HNI, ladies and gentlemen, Mga bimining ginang at ginoo. Hindi tayong iiwanan, hindi tayo tatalikuran. Basta, bilang pamilya tayo ng H&I. Dahil tuloy ang laban at inyong tulong at suporta para sa panakahihintay natin ang pagbabalik ng Hans Inclusion Philippines Panigurado. Basta, Tuloy natin ang ating panalangin para sa pagbabalik ng organisasyong ito. At walang iwanan, dapat magkasama pa rin tayo. Kami, tayo, ang Hands Inclusion Pilipinas. Magkikibahagi tayo sa isa't isa saan man hindi lamang sa Pilipinas, pati sa buong mundo. That was the time for the editorial Thursday for Thursday, September 3, 2020. On behalf of all of us at the Inclusion Channel, Info Radio, and UTNI, I'm your host, Carlos Miguel Kanahashi. I will be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. for the, the Inclusive Report. And I'll be seeing you again this weekend for the One Inclusion Live Weekend, Saturday and Sunday ay na magpayo tayo pa inclusion. Thank you very much. So God bless us all. Pagpalain tayo na wa ng Diyos ng Pugong may kapat. God is good all the time. God be the Lord. We at Hans Inclusion Philippines good together and should include us. H&I, God first. We will leave you now with this song. This song called We Feel As One. As we enter this trying time. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, to experience this time to reflect what we have done, especially for our frontliners. And this song is inspired from We Win As One, the theme song of the 2019 South Inclusion Game, composed by Ryan Tayabiyab and the words composed by Floyd Quinto. We Heal As One, song is rendered by Inigo Pascual, Julian Sanse, Jed Madela, Fox Fernandez, Marco Pisa, Lili Rivera, Rita Daniela, Paolo Valenciano, J.J. Tanzingan, Isel Santos, Isai Alvarez, and her husband, Robert Senya, Ben Chulachenko, Olga Cassie, Michael Williams, Alden Richards, Ken Chan, Christian Bautista, Martin Rivera, Sara Geronimo, Bamboo, Lani Misalucha, Gary Valenciano, Akol de Ap and, and Leo Salonga, together with the three doctors from all hospitals throughout NCR and the neighboring provinces. 
As we now enter this difficult time this year because of the pandemic, I urge you guys to stay at home. So without further ado, here now is We Heal as One. Okay. We leave you now with this. <coughs> Coming up next, SRO with Alvin El Chico and Doris Bergonda on Incredible. Stay tuned. Bye, guys. Good night and peace be with you. Peace out.